right, we're going to get started in just a minute. People are kind of straggling in. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Sure, some of us okay. Happy Wednesday. Uh, today, we are going to, oh, I should start off. Happy St. Patrick's Day, of course, right? Uh, I'm afraid I'm not wearing green, but my last name is Kelly, so I get some a little bit of uh, leeway with that, I think. That will count. Um, what we're going to do today is I've got a couple questions uh, people have been asking about, just a bunch of different stuff. So we're going to do a little bit of a, of a potpourri uh, mixed bag, but uh, I think these will hopefully be things that will help you out and you'll find useful. Um, the first one we're going to talk about, uh, Google Meet. Um, we do have a at the K4 level or pre-K4 level tomorrow. We're getting a visit from an author, a virtual visit. <clears throat> and I know we're starting to get more and more um, guest speakers or whatever it is, but they're doing it virtually. And my guess is that they will be doing that, you know, going forward where you're probably more likely to get somebody, an expert or, or you know, somebody that you um, want to have, you know, join your class virtually or whatever it is if you do it remotely. So, you know, there's some best practices around that. Um, I'm going to show you some Google Meet tips and tricks around that. Um, and then we're going to talk about uh, Google Drive and sharing things, and not just sharing things with another individual, but um, the, I know at the high school level, we're doing the um, science fair right now. And so the easiest method to be able to share many different uh, files at once with different people. So um, I'll show you how that works. And then finally, <clears throat> um, I got a couple of requests. Uh, the opening slideshow that you saw that kind of just scrolls through by itself, has a little music playing. Um, something like that. So if you're interested in, in making your own version of that for your course, uh, so when you're ready to start the class, but you're not quite ready yet, um, and I'm also going to show you how to share that as well. So you can have students make copies or you can make copies of the original template. So with that, let's get started. Let me do a quick screen share here. Okay. This is going to be a little bit meta, a little bit weird, because what the first thing we're going to talk about is um, for tomorrow, for the author uh, who is coming, um, one of the things they requested was that the, the they put the author, uh, Ryan T. Higgins is the gentleman's name, and it's going to be full screen in the classroom. Now, we're doing this as a Google Meet, so all that the classroom teachers can join, and they'll be able to join, and, and that also gives them the opportunity to participate. Um, <clears throat> now, they'll start muted, and then, of course, as they ask questions and so forth, and we have a list of questions already ready to go. Uh, but for him to set it up, it's at the user's end, that for, therefore it's at the teacher's end of how they configure their Google Meet to be able to make it be full screen like you're seeing right now. Uh, where they do that is a couple different places. So here's a Google Meet right now. As you can see, I'm in tile view. So I'm going to start by going down to the lower right-hand corner with the three little dots right here. Change layout. Uh, my recommendation is keep it on spotlight mode. And what spotlight mode does is it makes it so just the person who's talking is basically full screen. Um, and so if you do that, that way when when uh, Mr. Higgins talks, it will come up, or when a student asks a question, it will kind of jump to them. The other piece here, I'm going to jump back to tile for our purposes right here. Um, the other thing that you can do is if I put my cursor over anybody on here, but I can put my cursor over myself, for example, or him, click the little thumbtack, this little thumbtack icon that comes up above it. If I click on that, that will stay full screen. Now, I actually do this. I rec When I record these sessions that we're, we, we share, this uh, Wednesday Tech PD, I actually use this because that way, whatever I'm explaining to you guys will be recorded on the screen. Uh, now, sadly, we're not going to be able to record tomorrow. That's kind of part of the deal, uh, but that's okay. Uh, we'll still be able to see it full screen and see the, uh, the students uh, ask their questions. Um, and the last thing, um, Sometimes you'll see this, and I don't know if you guys can see this right now, but uh, let's see right there. So there's my thumbtack that pins this video there. Right beside, if you wonder what that is, basically that turns on your own video or not. So if you want to see yourself in it, um, that's what it's for. Again, that's a personal preference if you want to have your video in the, the tile view or not. Uh, you can turn those on and off. Um, I think I've mentioned this before, but I'll just remind people, uh, there is another push coming out in the in the spring as far as the next couple of weeks, more features. Um, Google's announced them as far as for Google Meet, other types of things. Uh, they haven't been released yet, and I, my guess is they'll be out like a beta. So uh, rolling going forward, things like being able to mute an entire class at once or be able to kind of freeze them so they can all do certain things, um, being able to pre 
uh, um, configure breakout rooms. I know that was a big question a lot of people wanted. So the ability to have breakout rooms already pre-configured in class sets, and then when the kids join, kind of put them in there. So that'll be a big one. Um, there's some other features that they've announced. And again, I don't have a time frame exactly when they're coming out, but hopefully in the next couple of weeks um, to try them out. Cool. All right. Um, any questions? Let's just check the chat real quickly. Looks like not. Uh, awesome. So we're going to talk a little bit about Google Drive sharing today. And again, that seems like an obvious thing, and it is, uh, but I'm just going to give you a couple more kind of tips and tricks about it. Um, we're used to uh, Google Classroom doing all of our sharing for me, and that's not a bad thing. Um, having Google Classroom uh, as our method to hand things out, to get back and forth for our students um, is, is super easy and it's useful. And um, the benefit of it is, you know, a student can basically take that template uh, and it's automatically shared with them. A question came up uh, that asked about why is it sometimes students, you know, they'll, they'll turn their work in, but they have no work on it. It's totally empty. What's happening most likely, 99% chance of this, is that when a student receives that assignment, so let's say you shared a template, you shared them, they just click submit before actually doing any work. Um, so that means that they are, aren't actually doing the work. They're just like hitting submit before anything happens. So one, they could, you could unsubmit it, so they could pull it back out and, and actually finish the work. Or two, you could return it, which is like another click. Um, yes, it's kind of a pain. It's kind of like having a student basically, uh, let's say you hand out, you know, a photocopies of an assignment and they took it and just handed it back to you without actually doing it. Um, that's kind of what's happening there. Um, it looks like it's submitted. Uh, the reason why some kids are doing this, they're not all students, but you might ask, well, why would they even bother doing that? If they don't do that, it will appear on their list of work that is owed. So if I'm a parent and I'm in the guardian summaries list and I get a list of the, the, the assignments that my, my son owes, if they've clicked submit, it's not going to appear in there because they submitted it. Now, the reality is they didn't do the work, right? Um, so it kind of gets them off the list. So maybe that's a conversation you want to have with mom and dad if you are, if that's an issue, if that's an ongoing issue. Um, it does happen. All right. Um, so if we use Google Classroom as our number one way to get work back and forth, Google Docs, Google Slides, you know, spreadsheets, all that kind of stuff. Um, in Google Drive itself, let's say I have documents like this. Let's say I have a folder, and this is what we were talking about with the um, science fair at the high school level. If I click on that folder, so I have this one folder and a bunch of different things inside of it. If I click that pull down right here and I share, Whatever my settings are for here will be set for all of them inside of it. So if I want to set a link, I set up right now so that anyone on the internet can view this. I could click copy that link, and that link would actually bring to this folder here. Um, the benefit of that is if you had a bunch of things, like what was at the high school level, uh, uh, Ms. Briggs wanted to be able to make it so that different teachers could see the work, but she wouldn't have to share them one by one by one. So she created a new folder. If I create a new folder right here, uh, let me go back for a second. We'll create a new folder and we'll call this uh, one sample just so we have it and get to it really quickly. Okay, so here it is. Um, if I click that little pull down on it and I click share, whatever settings I give to this, anything I drag into that will have them. So for example, right now, this is set up so that only people added within RSU 19 uh, could even see it. So I can click on that and I can say, no, no, no. Um, yes, I want everybody in RSV19 to be able to view it, or maybe I want everyone to be able to edit or be a commenter on that, whatever the work is. Um, or I want to say anybody with the link, so this would be people that may be outside RSU19, um, can either view it or they can edit it and so forth. So I'm going to say anybody with the link can see it, um, but only you guys can, can be able to edit it. I'll click done right there. Now, if I create a new document inside of here, so here it is. This is my sample doc. Um, back here, let me refresh this Google folder. This is going to have the same settings. Um, so what are the benefits of that? Well, you might want to have a folder that's embedded, say, on your website or somewhere that you want students and or parents to be able to get to so they can see things, uh, but they can't edit things. Things like um, you know newsletters or documents or that kind of stuff. Um, that's an easy way of doing that. Um, current sharing all at once. Another option, if you want to share documents with students and, and, and have basically the equivalent of, you know how in pretty much every classroom in the world, there's usually like a, like a little tray or a little shelf of different papers that students go over and take as they need. So maybe this is a tray of like, oh, these are your reading assignments or your, um, you know, do a weekly reader and you fill out this, you know, sheet of paper to kind of explain it or whatever it is. Um, things that you're going to hand out all the time. 
you wouldn't necessarily make them an assignment every time, meaning they're going to be assignments that get pushed out to the class. They're just something that students would always have to have access to. Uh, now, you could have one document. They could make a copy of it, do it that way. But I'm going to show you a couple tips of ways you can make it so it's even easier. Um, so the first thing is, let's say, for example, here's my here's this um, slideshow that we're using right now. So I created this slideshow. Uh, we're going to go through the one we're looking at right now. Up here in the top here, up in the address bar, um, is a bunch of gobbledygook, right? But at the end, you'll see a slash right in here, slash edit, and then a bunch of stuff after that. So if I was to take this link, now the first thing I would need to do is to make this public. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody can edit it, but everybody else can see it. Uh, if I click share in the upper right corner right here, uh, right now, this is already open. This is already public. But by default, it would probably be set to restricted, which would mean only myself. And if I shared it individually with one person, could be able to see it. Um, but I don't want to do that. I want to change this to anybody with the link can see this, not edit it. They're a viewer, but they can't, uh, they can change it. So now, if I take this link up here, and I'm going to change everything from slash edit to the word copy. Let me show you what it looks like a little bit zoomed in here. So everything from whatever's on the left side to slash edit to the word copy. And then I'm going to copy that link up there. And the reason why you do this, if I gave you this link right now, whoops, let me try that again. I didn't paste it. Go back to do, copy that link. This again, paste that link. They would see something that looks like this. This is like that digital photocopier where you have the link wherever you put it. Let's say I'll throw it in the chat. If anybody wants a copy of this digital handout slideshow, you are more than welcome to have one. I'll just throw it in the chat. You'll notice that it ends with slash copy as the last link. When you click on that, it will look like this. And will say, hey, do you want to make a copy of this? And you can. You can click on that make a copy. And now you have your own copy. A couple things about this. One, that copy is not shared automatically with you as a teacher. Okay, so again, it's like you have a, a stack of papers in your classroom, a student goes over and grabs one because they need it, and then when they're done, uh, they have it. They still have to share it back with you if you want to do it that way. Um, the other thing about this, and I'll show you another way in a second, is it doesn't really show you what you're actually copying. It just says it's a Google slideshow. It's called Digital Handouts. I can make a copy of that. Mm, well, maybe I don't want to. Maybe I want to see it first. So another way of doing this back here is the same process. You can do that slash copy afterward with the word slash template preview. It's basically the same thing. I'm going to take this copy here. I'm just going to use the word slash template slash preview. And we'll show you what that looks like. It's the same thing. It just shows you what it is first. So, oh, I can see. What am I actually copying? Instead of saying copy, they say use template. But it's the same process. It's the same thing. So I can say, oh, this is actually a slideshow about making copies. OK, yeah, I want that. So again, you click that Use Template button. It will make your own copy of it. In fact, I'll show you when I click on that. Now, <laughs> I own this one, so it's a little bit weird. Let me do another account. Uh, actually, I'm not going to worry about it right now. It'll take too long to set it up. But um, I own this one, so it's, so it's a little bit weird. Actually, I think I have another. Um, no, I don't. I'm not signing into an account. Um, that so it will come up and it'll give you basically your own copy and it will say copy of whatever that slideshow was. Um, I'll sh throw that one in the chat as well, just so you can kind of see the difference. Uh, and really, the only difference is that ending where it said cop slash copy versus slash template preview. Again, two choices. What I would do if I'm in my classroom, um, either in my Google Classroom or maybe on my website, or whatever, I might have a list of different. You know things. Hey, if you ever need a copy of this thing for my class, just click here, click on that link, and then it would, you know, they'd pull it up and take it. Um, the last one that may or may not be useful to you, um, and I just throw this out there because um, let's say you have something that you want parents. Um, let's say you have a like a newsletter or something like that that you want parents to be able to take copies of, but they're not going to have a Google account necessarily, um, and you just want to show it as a PDF so they can just read it, whatever they have. Uh, you can do the same thing, same process, slash export question mark format equals PDF. I think I have a copy of this. Let's see if it pulls up. Yeah, right here. See, I don't know if you can see that down there. So this is a this is a PDF um, version of that same thing. Um, 
And again, just like it sounds like it's just it's the same link, and they could put that on there. Hey, read our our PDF, and they click on that link, and it would just pull up a PDF for them. Um, so that and then the benefit of that is, regardless of what type of device they're on—a phone or a or a tablet or a laptop or whatever—a 99% chance they really should be able to read a PDF, no matter what it is. All right. Let's see if we got any questions in the chat. I don't see anybody, so that looks good. Awesome. So I'm going to take this same slideshow that we just were playing in right here. And again, I, I gave copies of this. So if you do want to take a copy of it, click on it. Now, I, I should mention this is one of the things. As I'm working on the slideshow, it's updating automatically. So if you go click on a, a link, it will make a, it'll still make a copy of whatever the latest version of this is. But if you take a copy of it, and if I go make a change, you're not going to automatically get the change. Again, it's, it's already a split at that moment. So if you make a copy of it, you have your copy. I go make updates or changes. You're not going to have those new changes. You could make another copy of it. But that's it's it, once it's copied, it's like a, a split at that point. Um, what I'm going to do in here is just kind of set up the idea of you know that that rolling that scrolling um, um, opening I have, uh, and you might have something like, hey, welcome to you know period two, uh, ten o'clock to ten thirty or whatever it is, um, that information. Um, so we won't go too much into the design of this type of stuff. I'll I'll change the background here, just get the little background I come. Um, I I tend to like to do these kind of. We'll make it. Uh, let's see, we'll make it red today because we've got. Um, I tend to like these gradients. Again, that's just an aesthetic choice. But right here, if I click color, um, if I click on gradients, I can, I can customize those as well if I want all kinds of different cool things. Of course, you can choose an image, um, whatever that is. So I'm going to just gonna say this is uh, Wednesday Tech TD. Um, one thing you may have noticed as we've started to work on these is this little um, – I actually turned it off, but as you start to add text boxes now, they'll give you this little icon here. What that does is if they, they're asking if you want to auto fit or resize shape based on text. So do you want that to, to spread out or do you want to keep it controlled? That's up to you, your preference there, if you want that or not. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this, and it's pretty uh, hard to see right now. So I'm going to make it a lot bigger. I'm going to center it. And so again, if I'm notice how I've highlighted here this entire box here, I'm going to click the little center button, and we're going to center it vertically as well, not just horizontally right here. Um, let's choose a cool font. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see. Ooh, that one's pretty cool. But I'm a little bit hard to read. Let's see one not quite as cool. How about this one? There we go. Um, and I'm going to make it uh, a white text so we can see it better, and let's make it a lot bigger. Okay, so there's my slide. Now, one other quick note, um, kind of a cool couple tips. If I want to, I'm going to add search the web for a, we'll search for a computer. Um, yep, let's grab this one, drag it over here. Okay, so there's my image. Um, if you click on, if you want to uh, use kind of an automated piece that's here, um, down the bottom right hand tab, you'll see where it says explore. Um, I just added some text, I added a picture. Um, if I click on that, it's going to give me uh, different possible versions of the same kind of thing, but you can kind of play with it. Like, I don't have to create these. These are like templates that are already built in just on whatever I typed in there. Um, so I don't know. Again, if, if it's better or worse or not, you can kind of play with that and decide yourself. But this is just kind of a handy, uh, it's a, the Explore tab down on the bottom right. It's, it's supposed to help you just make it quicker, basically. Um, so this is a cool one. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Got a computer in the background. Uh, let's say I want to add another text box here. I'm just going to go here. I'm going to say uh, Mr. Kelly's uh, Wednesday Tech PD. Um, and I want to use this same font and size and everything else that I'm using here on my the text I have without having to redo it. So um, if I highlight some text, there's a little icon up here. It looks like it's called the Format Painter. It looks like a little rolling paintbrush in the upper left here. I'm going to click on that. And now when I come to this text box I have over here, I can highlight text here, and it will copy, it will mimic whatever's in here. Uh, and it's super helpful if you're trying to do a bunch of different stuff, right? Um, so that looks pretty good. Um, we're going to do one last thing here. Let's do, I'm going to add an image of our logo uh, over here in the upper right. So I'm going to search my drive. Let's do logo. Let's see what I got here. Now oh, there's our Warriors logo. That looks pretty good. Oh, a little bit too big. We'll resize that. 
Okay, a couple things about this. So let's say, um, yeah, that looks okay, but it's again, it's kind of sticking out there. I got the white on the sides. Um, we can talk about, you know, you know, I go in and edit that if I want to. One quick way around this, real quickly, if I wanted to, right here, um, I could add a another like a white box or circle behind it. So let's say I'm going to add a shape up here. Shapes, we got a circle. We're going to add it behind this warrior logo. Now the first thing you'll see, obviously, is in front of it. So I'm going to right click or control click on a Chromebook on that image order and bring to front okay and so what this is going to do is going to give me yeah i like that a little better so now it doesn't look quite out of, out of place there it gives it something behind it uh, one last thing you can do if you want to again depending on what you're you're trying to accomplish here uh, i'm going to hold the shift key down to click on both of these uh, so i have both of those icons that shape and that image uh, control click or right click and i'm going to group them and so now this, these two images are now a single image or a single shape. And so if I resize one of them, it does both of them at the same time. Whoops. And actually, that's one more um, worthwhile thing to mention. Uh, when you're resizing images, and you, I'm sure we've all done this, where you see it, and sometimes it gets distorted, right? Because I grab the, the edge of it, and I'm like, oh, that's not going to work, OK? So if you hold the Shift key down while you resize it, it will resize X and Y at the same time. So it will make it proportionally bigger and smaller um, for that. Uh, yes, Cindy uses Explore all the time. It's very helpful, isn't it? All right, awesome. OK, so the last thing we're going to do, there's our um, cool image. We're going to use this for our, our scrolling deck, slide deck or whatever. So let's say this is the scrolling slide deck. I'm just going to slide this one up to the top just so we have to start with it. Uh, that I want to have as my running thing. I might have two or three slides. Uh, the purpose of this, why you have this, and why I do this and to start with is when you join, one, if you hear music, then you know that your audio is fine, right? You know that sounds coming. So that should hopefully take time. If, if you don't hear audio and like, oh, I'm listening for music, uh, there's nothing playing, then that gives you time as an individual to set up your, your speakers or your headphones or whatever you need uh, for students as well. Also, if you have something slowing through, uh, kids will know that they're in the right place. Oh, I'm on period two in Mr. Kelly's class. Yeah, we're good. I know what I'm supposed to be. Because um, sometimes if they join early and they're not sure uh, what's going on or they're, where they're supposed to be, that, that could be problematic, right? Because they are, you know, am I here? Am I in the right place? So what I'm going to do with this slideshow to be able to make it so that it's going to scroll through and be able to play, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click up on Transition. I'm going to choose one. And again, it doesn't really matter. You can go through, there's some cool ones, there's a flip and a gallery or a cube. I'll choose a, the cube one just because. Uh, I'm going to apply it to all slides. I'm going to hit play. And so this will go through and it will choose. You can choose how fast it's going to go through from slide to slide. Okay. How I do that, how I get it so that um, it will go from one slide to the next is click on File, Publish to the Web. This one's already been published, so you'll right here, this would be uh, uh, orange or yellowish, and you click Publish. And this is going to say right here, okay, so you want to auto-advance slides. How fast? Usually about five seconds. I use five seconds. Again, you could change it if you want to. Start the slideshow automatically when you very start, and restart when it's done, so we'll loop. Now I'm going to take this link that I just created. So I added a transition. I said you're going to auto-advance every five seconds. It's going to start as soon as it starts, and it's going to end as soon as it ends, and I copy that link. This is the link that I would play. Let me pay, whoops, did I copy it? No, I didn't copy it. Hang one second. Let's try that again. Five seconds. Start, start. Copy that link. And now this is the, the tab. I'm going to paste that. That I would play so that this is just scrolling every five seconds. It should go to the next one here. There it goes. Um, just kind of in the background. Um, now, something like this, you could take this this link right here, and I could add it to my bookmarks bar. So I just click on it, and it's ready to go, or however you want to get to it. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. Um, for the audio, for the music, I want that playing. Um, what you need to do is you need to actually have an audio recording, and maybe it's a song or something like that, and have it uploaded ahead of time in your Google Drive. So there's two places that I would start with if you're looking for just music or just kind of something to play. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using um, copyrighted music uh, that's fun obviously but if you know it's just it's it is reasons why not if 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 you ever created like right now i'm creating i'm recording this video this meet uh, and if it had a copyrighted piece of music in it 
Um, no person would watch it, but the, the Google scans these things, right, and says, oh, that's a copyrighted song. Uh, it's possible that they would, like, disable it, basically. So it's just not worth the deal with that. So the two places that I would like to go, um, the first one is the YouTube Audio Library. And so uh, these are free, uh, 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 let's remember to create this, here you go. Uh, these are free songs, they're copyright free, they're available for use. Um, I might come in here and I, right over here, there's a little, that little three lines, you had to search. I say, uh, let's see, what genre do I want? I want uh, pop music and jazz and uh, let's see, country. Okay, so that's going to limit it down. Now I want, I can click on this again, what uh, mood do I want? Uh, we'll do uh, happy and bright. All right, so if I click on one of these to hit play, you may not hear this because I'm, I'm going through these headphones right now, uh, but I can go through and play the ones that I want. They're like, oh, that's a good one. I like that one. Okay, so you can listen to them. If you like them, they'll show you how long they are. So it's two minutes here. Uh, you can look by other uh, creators. Uh, if you find one you like, or many, oh, is it? let's do one more here. There we go. It's a very country one. Again, I don't know sure you guys can hear that, but um, let's say I like this one. I'm going to click download over here on the right. This is going to download that file. I'm now going to go to my Google Drive. I'm going to new file upload, or I could drag it in, but I'm going to new file upload. I'm going to go find it. It's in my downloads. There's that file I just downloaded. Now, in your case, it's going to be called files. It's not going to be called downloads, it's called files. But this will upload right here. Okay, so here it is. There's the song I just downloaded. You are going to have to, in the upper right-hand corner, click the little three dots and share it and make that file public. If it's only restricted to yourself, nobody else will be able to hear it. So I do need to come in here, click on that and change that um, to be anyone with the link or public. In your case, you can technically make it just in RSU 19 because there won't be any students in your meet or looking at these that aren't in the district. So again, that's probably fine. But now that I have that uploaded audio, um, I can come back to my slideshow here. I have to upload it to my Google Drive first, but I can click insert audio it's going to look at my google drive oh there it is it's recent right the one i just uploaded i can select that here's my link now here's a little icon for it so a couple settings that will pop up over on the right side that you want to make sure you look at one start playing automatically you want it to just when you when you hit that link it just starts playing like you don't have to go, go hit play or anything um, volume i just keep it up again this is so that uh people can see like oh there's music playing that i know my audio is okay Hide icon when presenting. Sure, I don't want them to see that little icon there, so we're going to hide that. Loop audio. Yes, you want to keep playing over and over, right? And stop on slide change. No, you want to play throughout all the different songs. So that was start on playing automatically, hide icon, and loop the audio. So now when I click present, The music is automatically playing, right? It's just playing in the background. So when you guys join, that music is just playing. If you want to do a couple different songs, one of the problems, of course, if you have the same song, you just loop it over and over again. It doesn't take long before it gets kind of annoying. Um, there's a couple different ways to do that. The quickest, easiest way is there is a program uh, or website called audiomass.co, and you can just drag those MP3s, those video, those audio files, one after another, and just make one big long song basically one big long song that has like five or six songs in it and save that as a new mp3 okay so it's just taking you know each of those ones i could file i could load from computer i could go find that one i just uploaded here so there's the first one go to the end of that and then go file and add another one so i gotta add five or six songs when i'm all done i would just click file uh, download or here, save draft locally, download as an MP3. So it's going to take five, six songs, make one big long song at it, and then do the same process where I'm going to upload it to my Google Drive and have it right there. The last thing, we're running out of time here, the last thing I'll just share with you guys is another source for music besides YouTube Audio Library is freeplaymusic.com. You can sign in free, you can sign in with your Google account. Same thing where I can choose by genres, I can choose by uh, feelings, by moods. Let's see, I want uh, adventurous, that sounds good. Um, and I can click on these, same thing, I can hit play, see if I like it. 
whatever. Um, once you have those, you can add it to a playlist. And when you're done, you can buy them. It says to buy, you put them in your cart. But for classroom use, which you say, this is for classroom use, it's free. So there's a little check that you do to say classroom use. It's then free. And now this just gives you more options for songs. Um, there's a lot of great stuff on here. I don't know exactly how many, but there's hundreds, if not more, uh, different songs and genres and stuff like that you can find that are pretty cool. So I think with that, um, that's right on the button. We're right at 1.30. Um, uh, have a great St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Uh, think green thoughts. Um, spring is right around the corner. Uh, I will see you all next Wednesday. Have a great week.